I'm James Lopez, producer with Gearbox Software. I'm Joel Eschler, producer at 2K Australia. For us, uh, we first met uh, Gearbox after we wrapped up our work on, on Bioshock Infinite. We've been working with uh, James over at Gearbox for a couple of years now. Um, and the, the original mission was go to the moon. That was kind of the, the one thing we had to do and, and everything else was kind of wide open. Mm -hmm. um, but like that go to the moon was enough uh, for, for us to you know, come up with uh, a really impactful, interesting story to tell this rise of, of Handsome Jack. Uh, you know, in this game, at the beginning, he, he's just working for Hyperion. He's trying to do good for that company. He's trying to do well for its employees. He's, he's uh, just a normal guy. He, he actually thinks of himself as a hero. Um, at the beginning of the game, he gets kicked off the Hyperion space station and he's trying to get back up there because they're shooting down and destroying the moon, so he's trying to save the day. And uh, we're able to tell this really interesting story about events that cause him to become this maniac, this mass murderer that he is in Borderlands 2. Mm -hmm. um, and it's this really good opportunity. We try to um, respond to fan feedback as much as possible, you know. Um, and this is definitely one of those things where when we were working on Borderlands 2 DLC, um, one of the most commonly requested things was, when are we going to the moon? You know, uh, when are we going to go to the moonshot facility? And I was like, oh man, well, let's kill two birds with one stone and put it all in one game, you know? Uh, and yeah, it's really exciting. Uh, fan feedback to this has been fantastic too. So it's really nice to uh, be able to give people what they're asking for and also get that kind of positive feedback to let you know that you're, that you're on the right track. We are essentially making the combat more uh, three-dimensional now. Uh, you know, you, it used to, in Borderlands 1, if you took damage, you hid behind a large rock to try to get your shields back so you get back into the fight. Uh, in Borderlands 2, there's still that, but, um, you know, but you also have more challenging enemies that could do things like rip you out of your cover by having a singularity effect, you know. Uh, now, um, enemies can jump above you. You know, your, your cover can be basically eliminated uh, by them being able to fly above you, and the same goes for you too. You know, um, if there's a if there's a scav that's being particularly sneaky and kind of hard to hit, screw it, just jump over them and just do a slam on yeah. them. Yeah, you know? we it, we uh, really want to bring this in to give more freedom of movement to players. You can you can move around a lot faster. You can move uh, greater distances as well. So yeah, for example, you, you can chain the, these things together, low gravity, this oxygen system. So if you have some enemies which are kind of hiding behind cover, especially if you're playing as Athena, you can jump up to the air, you go really high, use the oxygen to boost yourself, bring out your shield, they'll start shooting you, you absorb damage into the shield, fire it back at them to stun them and do some damage, and then do a stomp and kind of blow them into the atmosphere. Mm -hmm. uh, so everything just started coming together. You know, we started with that moon and then we, we thought about these moon promises and um, it's turned into a, a bunch of features which uh, combo together really well. Well, we're working collaboratively with Gearbox every single day. Um, we're making the game together. And uh, when we got, had the opportunity to work on a Borderlands game, we absolutely wanted to make sure that we were doing right by the franchise. I mean, we have confidence in ourselves as, as game developers, but it's it's Gearbox's baby. And, uh, you know, so many people over there, they live and breathe and, and dream and have night sweats about Borderlands, <laughs> I'm sure. And uh, we wanted to make sure that we were doing right by it. And when we're working uh, with the original designers from Borderlands, Matt Armstrong, we're working with Anthony Birch, who's still writing for the game, along with a couple of English writers back at home in Australia. Mm -hmm. um, so it's 100% it's every single day working together. Yeah, our um, our you know leads at you know through all of the different disciplines work very closely with with uh, 2K Australia. Uh, Zach Ford, who uh, is our, our lead designer, you know he's talking to uh, to Jeff and Jono and all those guys daily, giving mm -hmm. feedback on like, hey, this felt really good. I you know this felt a little different to me, you know, but maybe uh, you guys have your own philosophy that could make this even better. You know, like there's there's a lot of I think. Um, and there's a lot of creative humility uh, because we're we know what we would do to make Borderlands fun, but we also know that there's probably more than one way to do that. And uh, working with 2K Australia has been really great that way because um, they've brought some really cool ideas to the table on how to make Borderlands even better. Yeah, I think it's always interesting if you net, let another um, experienced developer have a shot at making something in a franchise. I mean, we've taken the lessons we learned um, in Bioshock Infinite where we had the sky rails and, you know, forcing players to look up and down. Uh, when we made tribes, the jetpacks, we're, we're kind of uh, 
bring all the lessons we've learned. We've been around for 15 years, the same as Gearbox actually, yeah. and uh, be able to kind of pull everything together and work with these guys to make this new Borderlands game. It's been awesome. You can't make a new Borderlands game without having more guns. Um, and uh, like I think from day one, uh, Jono, who's our creative director back uh, in 2K Australia, he, he knew he had to have lasers. <laughs> at, at any expense, he didn't, he didn't care how we were going to make them, uh, we had to have lasers. So we've worked really hard to put lasers in the game, and they go across all the manufacturers. So you have your Molly One uh, lasers, which are kind of this Ghostbusters style uh, beam. You have your Dahl ones, which are more traditional bolt lasers. Um, you have your different reload attributes, everything, but you also have uh, all the elements which, which can be attached to them. So you can have um, a shock laser, or you can have an ice beam where you're freezing an enemy. Um, and we brought cryo as well, a new element type, which it goes through the guns, the enemies, the, the plant life, the grenades, everything. So you can actually uh, freeze enemies solid and then shatter them into a million pieces. And it's really cool because in, in the low gravity, if you manage to like freeze someone, then run and melee them, for example, their ice shards just kind of kind of flow off into the atmosphere. Yeah, I think it's important, you know, that we add as much as we can with each game. You know, there's there's still plenty that we can do uh, in this universe. Um, you know, we've you know expanded the gear a lot. You know, we, we even have new gear types. There's the lasers, there's the Oz kits. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we're adding. You know, we're expanding the combat system through the oxygen and the low gravity. Um, you know, we like to. You know, we like. We want our fans to feel. Like we're always adding something new to the game. You don't want to get too comfortable. There are some pretty, <laughs> there are some pretty awesome uh, legendary weapons in this game. Um, one I could talk about, which isn't going to give a spoiler, we have one which is called the Ice Cream, and uh, it's it's a, a cryo assault rifle. And uh, as you shoot it, it plays the uh, ice cream truck <laughs> music. <laughs> yeah, you can uh, you can definitely count on us and have some quirky legendary and unique guns in there for our fans. Cool. You know, Raid Boss is a, is a very interesting thing uh, that uh, I would definitely like for, uh, for us to, to investigate, you know. Uh, right now we're, we're focusing on, on the main game, but who knows what's in the future. Well, yeah, I mean, definitely, we definitely need to have new enemies. You know, uh, skags don't make any sense on the moon. You know, uh, they, they need, well, I mean, the most obvious thing is that they need oxygen, but also, they're a Pandora creature. The moon is not Pandora, so we have different things. Like Kragans, which is one of the ones that we're showing off right now, which is this sort of, this, this rock monster that absorbs elemental uh, effects. So there are ice variants, there's corrosive variants, there's fire variants. At the end of the demo, you see one that has a lava uh, core but it's also an ice kraken. Uh, so there's a lot of really cool varieties out there. There's some really creepy one that we're not showing yet <laughs> that, I, that uh, to me is up there with like the drifter. I, you know, there are fans that hate the drifters because of their creepy spider look. And you know, uh, Joel's team has brought something else that's really awesome for that. Uh, being set in between uh, the first game and the second game, we looked at opportunities. Uh, you know, there are there's some echo logs that you find in Borderlands 2 where it's kind of hinting at, at different stories. Mm -hmm. And some of those, uh, we felt that the pre-sequel is a really good opportunity to kind of actually show that story for players, you know, um, kind of give that payoff. Uh, but for, for moments that made sense and characters that made sense set in between the first game and the second one, there'll be some returning characters. And so, is this going to lead directly into Borderlands 2? Will there be kind of a bridge in the gap right at the end of the game? Is that the goal? There's going to be a little bit of room. You know, um, we don't want to tell the story of everything that's happened between Borderlands 1 and Borderlands 2. We're really just focusing on on Jack's rise and transformation. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, that we're not going to answer. Uh, we're probably not going to answer every question that the fans have, but hopefully, we'll answer quite a few of them. Borderlands, the pre-sequel, uh, will release in the States on October 14th and internationally on October 17th. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's released on Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Windows PC.